So in this lecture, we're actually going to talk about increases in bicarbonate. And increases in bicarbonate, of course, since it's a base, and since it's still the metabolic component, are going to be termed metabolic. I know you're already ahead of me on this. Alkalosis. And we're, again, going to talk about sodium versus chloride because this is kind of the opposite of that secretional acidosis, although a completely different mechanism. So in a metabolic alkalosis, which I'll write down here, the driving force behind a metabolic alkalosis is the loss of hydrochloric acid or the sequestration or trapping of it. And so what happens is we get an increase in bicarbonate secondary to this. So again, what's driving this is the loss or sequestration of HCl. I'm sure we all know that HCl is essentially gastric content. And so when we think about this, we think about it in terms of small animals versus large animals. And so in small animals, what we're talking about is gastric vomiting. And the gastric vomiting is occurring because most often from a gastric outflow obstruction. So there's something that's essentially blocking the pylorus or near there, resulting in gastric contents not remaining within the body. And so we lose hydrochloric acid, and so we get a metabolic alkalosis. So you can imagine then, right, so here's our bicarbonate. We're going to have a decrease chloride. So that's, again, small animals. So that was our small animals, so dogs and cats. Now, in large animals, it's a little bit different, and we mostly talk about sequestration. Some people call this internal vomiting. And in cattle, we see a couple things cause this. In cows, we see DAs, so we displace abomasum. And we can also see abomasal atony. And the last one is similar to horses, where we essentially have um, ileus. Now, abomasal atony in cattle we see secondary to uremia, so um, azotemia, especially renal disease, post-renal causes. In ileus, we tend to see due to severe like GI inflammatory disease, very bad inflammatory disease and hemorrhage. So that again, that was in um, cattle. In horses, we tend to see, not houses, horses, there we go. In horses, we tend to see ileus. And this is also due to GI inflammation, and it's really a proximal inflammation resulting, again, in the ileus and a trapping of hydrochloric acid. So these animals have a low chloride, usually it's an absolute decrease in chloride, and the sodium may also be low, although the sodium may be normal or high, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. So this loss or sequestration of hydrochloric acid is what we're going to focus on with metabolic alkalosis. There's other causes listed in the notes, and one of them is a compensatory cause, and it's secondary to respiratory disease. We'll talk about that after the midterm. And we're not going to really talk about the, the specific renal-like drugs that are associated with it. Now, you can imagine that an animal who has gastric vomiting or who really can't take in fluids because of ileus or something that's going on is going to become rapidly dehydrated. And so these animals often have a concurrent titrational metabolic acidosis, and that's because of that increase in clue, specifically the L and the U. So you see an increase in that, and so you can get a concurrent increase in anion gap. And so you can have a concurrent titrational metabolic acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis. 
course, you're not going to have a concurrent secretional because the chloride does the opposite thing. And so animals can have complex acid-base disturbances where they have a titrational metabolic acidosis most commonly, since CLU is relatively common in terms of acid-base disorders. Uh, and then they may have an alkalosis or potentially secretional metabolic acidosis, depending on what's occurring. So then how are you going to diagnose this? Well, a couple ways. So the quickest way, especially when there's a primary gastric vomiting, et cetera, or a DA, you're going to look for an increase in bicarb and a decrease in chloride. That's going to be the easiest way to identify this. You can have more subtle changes where you have chloride that's less than sodium. And so we can see that in animals that might have occasional vomiting that's gastric, but isn't maybe a primary disease occurring. This is certainly the easiest to recognize. Uh, and this chloride versus sodium, again, it's a little bit subtle. You can do the calculation, which we can practice, or you can, again, eyeball it.